So I've only done one craft show so far, but I want to share with you three things that I learned. And I think even though with my little experience, you're going to see that these are very logical and they might help you at your next craft show or your first one. The first thing is that people loved big things. I had this big one foot by two foot charcuterie board. I had this hickory um, serving tray and this big walnut serving tray. And so the, the big serving trays and the uh, big charcuterie board sold quickly. And then the lady that bought the charcuterie board, she bought a, a, um, a coffee table and she wanted me to, to deliver it. So it sat there all day and people kept wanting to buy it. I was shocked. So for my next show, I'm gonna make sure I have plenty of large serving trays and large cutting boards. My mother-in-law made a great point afterwards. She said, people want things that they really can't get anywhere else. The next thing I learned is that I should have coffee tables. Uh, I only had one coffee table and a lady bought it. It was made of ambrosia maple with just metal legs like this one. And so for this next craft show, I'll make sure I have just beautiful looking wood with metal legs. Now I'll do some without metal legs. I'll do some with probably ambrosia maple because that's the, the least expensive hardwood I can get, which is shocking, it's beautiful. And then I can paint them black if, if the ambrosia maple doesn't match the tabletop. So that's my second recommendation. Make sure you've got some beautiful wood coffee tables that you can sell at a decent price. Um, I found that piece of wood from a local guy who had it milled. It's aged for a year, one inch thick, and that only cost me $23. The uh, metal legs cost about the same amount, so I can sell this table for probably $200, which is what I sold that ambrosia maple one for, and that ambrosia maple only cost me $2. I, I want to say it was like $2.95 a board foot, which is amazing. And you can sell that for $200 and that's okay because you know where to get the wood, you know how to prepare the wood, especially if it's rough sawn, and you know how to finish the wood, which I recommend Rubio Monocode because it protects more like a polyurethane, but feels like an oil. The next thing that shocked me is that I sold out of my Purple Heart. Now I love using Purple Heart. I love the way it feels. I think it's beautiful. I think it's amazing that there's a wood that is this color naturally. I know it fades over like 10 years depending on how much UV light it gets, but it's amazing. Um, my, my wife doesn't like it, but, but I love it. I love working with it and I think it's cool looking. And I realize that a lot of people feel that way too. Most people have never held a solid piece of Purple Heart. So it's cool for you to provide that. Um, I was shocked when I got into woodworking that there weren't more solid Purple Heart charcuterie boards and cutting boards. A lot of people would put a strip in or a couple strips, but not solid. I, I love it, and I love showing off a wood and not getting in its way. So offer solid pieces of Purple Heart. Now the shocking thing to me was it's the same price at my local hardwood store as Walnut. It's $99. $9.99 a board foot, so $10 a board foot. Um, and again, most people don't know, some people don't even know exist. exists. A lot of people don't know it exists. A lot of people don't know where to get it. And a lot of people don't know how to work with it. It might splinter a lot for them. So, um, you know, I charge the same as I do for something like Walnut. And I try to charge, you know, about the same for everything. I don't want, want people to really know that Ambrosia Maple is cheaper. Uh, for me because I think it's just as beautiful as walnut and purple heart. So those are the three things. Uh